Hey there, sports and climate change fans. It's been a while, but we're back with a special Cubs Corner Super Bowl XLV XI yi, 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 yi edition. It's me, Kevin, and from an undisclosed location up north, it's my pal Gordon. Yo, what's up, America? So the weather has been wackier than ever since the Chicago Cubs won the World Series in 2016, but clearly the Cubs' first world title in over 108 years did not, in fact, usher in the end of the world. What about huge wildfires in California, followed by mudslides and locusts? Yeah, well, that was hell on earth, but not yet the end of the world. And 50 inches of rain over Houston, Texas? You have to expect that every thousand years or so. Wildfires in Greenland? Well, that is unusual. Bees dying off? Huge fish die-offs? Extinction rates of species that scientists are calling biological annihilation? Now you're just getting depressing. Donald Trump as president? Okay, look. The point is that we were clearly gladly wrong that the Cubbies winning the World Series for the first time in over a century did not bring about our species' demise. But... The Eagles or the Patriots winning the Super Bowl XXYVKFC, oy vey, might just do it. As lifelong Eagles fans, we have been watching them full shirt our entire lives. But here they are now in Super Bowl CLXLVIKY Jelly. Yes, the Eagles haven't won the NFL title for 57 years or two years before I was even born. And that's a hell of a drought. Could ending this drought usher in the global drought of climate change? But before we analyze that, let's consider some fans who might be conflicted about this matchup between the city of brotherly love and Boston, or Foxborough, wherever the hell that is. Remember, these two cities have been fierce rivals since colonial days. So let's consider Benjamin Franklin, born in Boston, but then spent most of his life in Philly. Who would he have rooted for? Ben wouldn't have time for those Boston Brahmin bean-eating types like the Adams Brothers and John, oh, look at my signature, it's so big, Hancock. He's an Eagles fan! I couldn't agree more, Gordon. Of course, Ben Franklin died 100 years before football was even invented, but there's no question, were he alive today, he would be bleeding Eagles green, and surely he'd be singing along with us. Fly, Eagles, fly, on the road to victory. Fight, Eagles, fight, score a touchdown, one, two, three, one, two, three. Hit them low, hit them high, and watch our Eagles fly. Fly, Eagles, fly, on the road to victory. E-A-G-L-E-S. Eagles! Woohoo! Then there's Noam Chomsky, born and raised in Philadelphia, but spent most of his life in Boston or near Boston at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in Cambridge. We actually know Professor Chomsky a bit from our peace movement work, so we were able to get his prediction for the big game. Gordon? <clears throat> Dear Gordon and Kevin, Super Bowl LXCLVLGICIA should be a great game. While I see the Eagles' defensive line as the key to roughing up Brady, I predict that the powerful Eagles' running tandem of Blunt and Ajayi will be playing smash-mouth ball up the middle. And I think Nick Foles will continue his run of brilliant quarterback play, as exemplified by his near-perfect 141 passer rating in the NFC Championship game. Unfortunately, none of these will be sufficient to stop the onslaught of U.S. global military domination and the neoliberalist corporatist policies that are crushing the dreams of working men and women around the world. Strong words from Professor Chomsky. Indeed. Okay, now, let's consider the chances of either team's victory in the Super Bowl bringing about the end of the world. First, the Patriots. I mean, the Trump-loving, cheating Patriot scum. If they win, it will be their sixth Super Bowl victory. Quarterback Tom Brady, Coach Hoodie, Bill Belichick, and the team owner Robert Kraft are all good pals with Donald fucking Trump. And both Kraft and Trump have six letters in their name. So right there, that's 666, six, six, the sign of the beast. Apocalypse, holy shit. Plus, with their loving Trump and his loving them, a Patriots win might just cause a mentally unbalanced president to nuke North Korea in a testosterone-laden spasm of celebratory violence. So long. It's been good to know ya. Yowza. As for our glorious Philadelphia Eagles, remember, they haven't won the NFL championship since 1960, 
seven years before the advent of the Super Bowl. To say their fans are hungry is an understatement. They're not just hungry, they're rabid. In fact, to call the Eagles fans rabid would be an insult to dogs and raccoons and other rabid animals. Also remember that Eagles fans are not exactly known for their good behavior. These are the same people who attacked Santa Claus with snowballs. There is an actual jail with an actual courtroom and an actual judge in Eagles Stadium to handle the drunken, loudish, fighting fans when they are too numerous to haul off to the local jail, which, as I understand, is about every other game. In any event, if the Eagles win, I see mass unrest and destruction in Philadelphia, possibly spreading to a working-class revolt in other blue-collar eastern cities, which would then cause Trump to declare martial law and try and arrest all black athletes in North America. And then, of course, nuke North Korea. And we think there's a strong possibility of that because the Eagles are going to win! Woo! Right now, the Eagles are clearly the better team overall. Their defense es en fuego. And their pass rush is ferocious, which is the key to stopping Tom Brady. Their running game, always key to winning championships, is second to none right now. Forget Nick Foles. This backup quarterback to our injured second-year phenom Carson Wentz has been dropping in passes long and short or in a dime. And he had that 141 nearly perfect passer rating in the NFC Championship as Gnome reminded us. He's beginning to regain his form of 2013 when he passed for a record seven touchdowns in one game and had the third highest quarterback rating of all time for a single season. Who knew? Well, I knew and Eagles fans knew. But yes, suddenly Nick Foles is the second coming of John Unitas. We would say Norm Van Brocklin or Sonny Jurgensen or Randall Cunningham or Ron Jaworski or Donovan McNabb, but right now he's better than all those Eagles passers of yore. So we have to go non-Eagle with the best of all time, Johnny Yu, who I actually met and got his autograph one time the day after he got benched for Marty Domrys. That was terrible, but he was a pro. So anyway, if the Eagles win, does it mean the end of the world? Well, maybe not the world, although the fans probably will burn down the city of Philadelphia. But if the world does end, it will have been worth it for the long-suffering fans of a great city. E-A-G-L-E-S, Eagles!